Welcome to Why I Quit, a show that covers real people quitting their nine to five jobs in search of something different. Listen to inspiring conversations where we dive deep into the stories of why people quit their jobs, what were the hardest parts, where are they now, and any advice for people following the same path. I am so excited to introduce Cody Benedetto as this week's guest on Why I Quit. Listen as Cody discusses his experience with working with big tech corporations during the beginning of his career. Learn how he started investing in real estate and building a startup on the side, all while working a full-time job. Get inspired listening to how he quit his job two months ago to start his own software development agency so he could focus more on controlling his schedule and spending more time with his family. Hey, Cody, thanks so much for joining us today. What's going on, Dave? Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Do you mind going back and giving me a little background about your education and what that turned into for your first job? Went to school originally for environmental science, quickly switched to business when I realized I can't do calculus. So I had an emphasis in marketing. So my first job out of college was running marketing and sales for a small energy efficiency company kind of near near where my folks live. So I lived at home and, and worked there for about a year. And then I shifted over to, I, I worked at Indeed, my, my first big corporate job, I guess, if you will. Started as kind of like an entry level customer service, you know, a, account specialist and pretty quickly worked my way up, getting involved in a bunch of different teams um, on more on like the account management and somewhat, somewhat sales side to then managing several teams and kind of went down the sales and franchise management and then moved back to customer services where I managed a handful of teams. I think at right before I left Indeed, I was managing between 60 to 80 people, four or five teams, different locations. So that was like, you know, pretty, pretty quick jump into management. I was at Indeed for about seven years. And then after Indeed, I went to a company called Datto a backup and disaster recovery company that now does a lot of cybersecurity. So very different field, still in the tech space. I was on the account management side. I oversaw the East Coast account management team. So working with a bunch of different small businesses and mid to large size managed service providers who work with small businesses. And since then, now I, I work for myself with my co-founder, Ryan. We have a company called Modern Launch and we're a web development company. So tell me a little bit about kind of heading into those first couple roles. You know, what was your expectation of the corporate workplace? And, you know, what was the reality of what that actually looked like for you? You know, we could call it corporate work, workplace, but, you know, big, big tech's a little bit different, right? So we had, you know, fancy offices with all the gizmos and gadgets and free food and ping pong tables and all the, all the fun stuff, crazy dress codes. Um, but no, it was, it was interesting being relatively fresh out of college. My first step into it was, you know, it was surprising, but it was much different than my first job, which was, I was one of 12 people, one of maybe five salaried employees. And I'm, you know, moved to a, a pretty large organization. I would say I learned a ton being part of a, of a larger organization, you know, having to make decisions as a group, working in team environments. So I was thrown into multiple teams with counterparts all over the world. Even, even early on in my career in, in tech, I was collaborating with folks in different offices, different, different organizations, different teams from, from all over. So I think that was, that was new to me, but also probably one of the most valuable things is just learning how to work with such a large group of people and coordinate initiatives and work together as part of a big organization. I learned a ton. It, it, I wouldn't say it, was, it wasn't like a rude awakening or anything like that, but it was something I hadn't really had that level of experience before. Yeah. And tell me about your mindset at the time. Did you think that you were going to be kind of working your entire career in this like corporate tech side? Did you have other aspirations of starting your own thing or, you know, what did that process look like for you? Back then, I, I don't know if I knew exactly what I wanted. I, I've always had like an entrepreneurial itch and I've always said, even since I was younger, like I'd love to eventually own my own business, kind of dictate my own schedule and really just see the fruits of my own labor and, and own something. But back then I was still getting my feet wet. You know, I, I was I was thinking I was going to have a professional career in, in marketing and specifically advertising. That didn't happen. You know, I did do a lot of marketing and sales in my, my first job, but the reason I took my job at Indeed was actually because we used Indeed to hire somebody. And that's how I heard the, about the company. And I, I jumped on board, not really knowing what to expect. And I, it was like a big 
challenge that I faced at the time was like, is this the route I want to go? Do I want to be in customer service at a big company? Is this, you know, it was, it was something I was, you know, I kind of took a, a leap on. Glad I did. I, I loved it. I learned some really good things, worked with some incredible people. But I think in the back of my mind, I, you know, I was young then and I knew that I needed to start somewhere. And I, like I said, I started at a, like an entry level role and a few folks there saw potential in me, took a lot of chances and I moved my way into management pretty quickly. And I think that's really where I like, I learned how to be a professional business person, right? Like learning how to manage a team. So I started a couple teams from scratch. So I had to almost create like pseudo business plans and creating uh, an entity within an organization. Indeed did a really good job at like creating almost like startups within the company. So that scratched my entrepreneurial itch for sure. At the time, probably didn't think I was gonna, you know, in the next five to 10 years, start something on my own. Is there a specific moment or a specific point when you started thinking about like really wanting to do something on your own or was it more of just, you know, kind of the overall goal of eventually getting to that point? I think early on, it was more of like, a, you know, in the future ideal state, like thinking about five, 10, 20 years down the road. Once I got to my next job at Datto, I had already been thinking in those lines. So right before I left Indeed, I had been doing a lot of research on starting my own business, on investing in different opportunities. So probably about the last year I was at Indeed, I was reading every book under the sun, listening to every podcast, a lot on real estate. And so my current business partner, Ryan, he and I started really researching real estate investing. And he had owned a property at the time already. And we ended up buying a rental property about the same time I kind of left Indeed. We bought a rental property in Florida and that kind of helped to jump start this view of what my future could be and generating income on my own and not relying so heavily on a, on a W2 position to sustain myself and my family. This is all during the time I was like leaving Indeed and joining Datto. We also started building a property analytics tool for us to use to analyze investment properties. And you know, one thing led to another and it was really helpful for us using it. We ended up building a standalone software for it. And we took it to market with another good friend of ours, Balin, and we built the product in full, it's still, still live today. In the transition of going from one, one corporate job to the next, I was investing in real estate and also helping to build this software that we then took to market. And we worked with a handful of real estate folks and real estate agents to, to, to launch. I was kind of embedded in like these two worlds of, you know, my corporate day job, which was not intense, but like, you know, it's cybersecurity, backup data recovery. It's a, it's a lot. And then nights and weekends working on investing in real estate as well as building a real estate analytics platform. It, it was hard to put a hundred percent focus into, into the entrepreneurial side. Cause I had a full-time job and I got a wife. And at that point I had, you know, we, we owned a condo and then, you know, not too long after that, while I was at data, we moved, we bought a house, kept the condo. And so we rent that condo out as well, have multiple streams of income. And it kind of all culminated to, yeah, this is, this is the direction I want to head. Like I want to keep investing in real estate, other investment opportunities, and I'd like to build my own business and, and work for myself essentially. So talk to me a little bit about as you start dabbling in different ideas on the side and having your full-time job and then having a family. How did all these things tie together in terms of like managing your time, work-life yeah. balance, and what did that look like for you? Yeah, it was messy, super messy, as you know. And this all started right before COVID, but then that's COVID is really when I started getting more heavily involved in everything. I remember Ryan and I, we closed on our property in Ryan's garage with a public notary who came with a mask on because of COVID. It was like the month one or two. I like to make things really complicated my, for myself. So I think within the one year I had switched jobs, bought two properties, the rental and the new home with my wife, started the, the real estate analytics platform and my wife became pregnant, which was planned. We're very excited. We have a beautiful baby girl. And so that was all like all, all at once. So obviously tough to manage. But it was COVID, right? And so my, my wife, Lindsay, works a tough job. She works in ICU at Yale. And so she had her hands very busy during the whole COVID experience. And I was working full time. But at the same time, I was also at home more. And the first few months of COVID, especially, you know, because she's in the hospital, we decided not to, not to see our friends and family because we just weren't sure. And so 
it to give me more time to focus on myself. And I really, really made it a point to leverage COVID and take advantage of the time I had to get things done and be productive and not fall into a, a pit of, you know, there's nothing, we can't do anything. I really wanted to make the most of it. You know, everybody's got their own COVID experience. It was really tough, but I did everything possible to network. And I've never been on so many Zoom calls, just meeting and interviewing. I know you probably introduced me to 20 plus folks, just getting to know everyone possible. And so I think looking back on it today, it's a little bit daunting, but back then it's like, you know, during COVID, I actually did have the time. You know, I could, I could work a full day and then I have all this time after work where it's like, I'm not going to go out. I'm not going to the bars, not going to see, see family and friends. So I use it to work on my personal finances and, you know, work on investing and work on the software. And that kind of all culminated into, okay, now how do I turn that into a self-sustaining business? You know, as you are going down the path of, you know, really thinking about starting your own business. Did you have a transition plan and what did that look like? Yeah, I, d I definitely did have a transition plan. I mean, this was something I'd talked to, to Lindsay about for, for years. She knew that my goal eventually was, was this, right? And we were hoping that Propel, the real estate software would kind of form into its own entity that we could then take to market and, you know, that would become full-time. And that ended up becoming, it, we, we still took to, to market did not become our full-time job. So Ryan and I kept working and we, you know, through the build of that product, we, you know, very similar story to, to you guys, right? Like, you know, went through it ourselves, we created a startup, we, we product managed a product from start to finish, we built it and launched it. And with that experience, we wanted to help other people kind of do the same thing. It's something that we were, were good at, we enjoy. Ryan's much more technical than I am. He's a software engineer by trade. You know, this was kind of my entry into the software development side, but I've been, I've worked in big tech for forever for SaaS companies. So I'm very used to that. And I, I love the design. I love the UI UX, you know, going through product feedback sessions. And it was really interesting and really intriguing to me. And I have a, a lot of experience managing clients and account management. So, you know, one thing led to another and we decided like, yeah, this, we, we, we can do this. Like, you know, we can, we can do this for other people and provide a service and, and help others start, start their own companies and launch, what, launch products and create websites and custom software development. And so on the personal side, I think, you know, Lindsay and I had many, many conversations and talks about what would be needed for us to be able to do this. We're taking a big risk and um, we're starting a family. Like, what do we need financially? How much money do we need? Where, where, like, what investments do we need set up? Like I mentioned, like we had at that, you know, we now have two, two rental properties. Um, so that helps, helps from the income side. We have, you know, we saved up uh, enough money that we felt comfortable with and we came up with a timeline and obviously Ryan was a big part of this, this conversation too, right? Like we had this plan and months and months before I ended up leaving my job, we kind of laid out, like, this is what the trajectory would look like. He was working at the same time too. So we needed to coordinate and say, okay, what's a reasonable time frame here. And for a number of reasons, we picked, you know, the start of, of this year, kind of a, a couple months in, and we had a start date and we said, this is when we're going to do it. And, you know, Lindsay and I felt comfortable with where we, where we were financially, with the family and knowing that, you know, worst case scenario, we're, we're taking a big risk, but we did it. <laughs> yeah. Talk to me about the, the conversation you had when actually quitting, was that, you know, difficult for you or were you at a point where you had prepared for it enough that it was okay? Or what did, what did that look like? Yeah, it's tough. I love my time at Datto. Really, really cool company, really wild space. And they're doing some really cool stuff now, especially in the cybersecurity world. I work with a lot of great people. You know, I'm an, I'm an extrovert, so I love, love people. I, I work with a really, really good team. I and mean, I still talk to a lot of these guys and, 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 and girls, and it's, it's just such a good group. It was tough. I felt like I was breaking up with someone, you know, but I knew that quitting to go start something on your own feels a little bit different than like quitting to go to another tech company. So I think it was harder for me when I left Indeed because I was leaving Indeed and going to Datto and I have nothing but good things to say about both companies. But like that felt really, really tough because I was like, you know, leaving one tech job for another. Whereas this, it's like, you know, I, I'm leaving because I'm starting something on my own. And I think most people were pretty excited and happy for me, but it's never, it's never easy. It was, it was, it was tough. Definitely ate at me a little bit, but I, you know, I, I thought about it for so long. I, 
it wasn't like it was a spur of the moment decision or anything like that. So I think something that's unique about you being on this show is typically I'm asking about the expectation of reality versus the first year. And a lot of people talk about how hard the first year is in the transition from like a stable paycheck to, you know, the unknown and not knowing how things are going to go. You know, on your end, you are one month, two months in. Talk to me a little bit about what that process has been like for you. It's been wild. I think to some extent, the transition was relatively smooth just because I've been involved in stuff outside of my corporate jobs for, for several years now, like working on these side projects. Like I, 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 I kind of know what that's like. What's been really tough is, is not having like, you know, I, I'm an extrovert. Like I said, I, I came from waking up in the morning to even though it's remote now. Right. But for the past couple of years, logging on to my computer, computer and talking to tens, if not hundreds of people a day. Cause I had teams that I was managing, collaborating with a bunch of different folks uh, and built the sales success org on product, and all kinds of stuff. And, you know, I'm still interacting with folks today, but the, the scale and the size is much different. So for me, that's been a huge, huge difference. Like right now in house, it's, it's Ryan and, I, and we have a, a handful of, of teams that we work together with and manage, but it's a much smaller team, smaller organization, smaller group smaller client base, right? We have a handful of clients. We don't have hundreds or thousands of clients like, like I'm used to managing. So that's been diff different for sure. I'm, I'm still working from home, still in my home office. So that, that hasn't changed. I think another thing too, is like, you know, starting the business from scratch, you wear all the hats from admin assistant to accountant to sales manager to everything. And so I can't sit still. I, I, you know, I'm crazy like that. And to me, that's been awesome because I love, you know, switching up projects and working on different things. Sales has been a really big focus for us as we're kind of launching and we made it a point and we made a really strong effort to try to close at least one sale before we actually launched. So we had some work lined up and we had some processes built out. And so it's been the focus for the past, you know, couple of months is really just building out a sales pipeline and a sales strategy so that we can sustain ourselves and that we, you know, are, are, are moving forward. Even when you start your own business, a lot of times you fall into the same norms that you have from your corporate job, like, you know, yeah. whether the working hours are nine to five, you know, whether, you know, how you set up certain processes yeah. or systems and, you know, how have you and Ryan thought about building a company that kind of fits with, you know, the lifestyle that you are looking for? I mean, there have definitely been days where we've worked kind of nonstop, like eating lunch in front of our computer screens while we're meeting with each other. But then there have also been days where I dip out at two in the afternoon and take my daughter to the beach with my dog. And, you know, we were able to accomplish all our tasks so I can do that. And I work from home and I've got a beautiful baby girl and like, that's, that's my priority. And so Ryan and I are very similar in, in our mindsets where like, we, we want to be successful. We want to create something, something great. But the reason we're doing this is so that we can enjoy ourselves and so that we can provide the life that we want for ourselves and for our families. And so that's a big, big piece of it. Every day is different. Every week's different, right? Like there will be days where we have to work longer hours, but there will also be days where, Hey, if we've got stuff done, like I don't, I don't care if Brian, if Brian decides to take off at noon, if everything's, everything's done and he's got, you know, he wants to go spend time with his family in, in, in New Canaan or if, if same, if I'm going to take Lucy out. And so having that flexibility is something I'm not used to. So that's been a little strange, but like in a, in a good way, I'm finding myself during the day, just, I'm just so much more happy because I know that I have more flexibility and I can see my daughter more and I can wrestle with my dog whenever I want <laughs> and I can make more time and plan trips and, and do things without having the same rigid structure. So that's been an adjustment for me, probably less so for Ryan because he's been in that kind of world longer, but we work really well together and, and he and I have the same mindset and we you know support each other. Uh, in that sense. So yeah, it's been, that's, that's been a really, that's been one of the best, the best things. And that's really the reason why we went this round. Like every conversation Lindsay and I had about, should I make this decision or should we make this decision? Cause this was a decision we made together. The reason we decided on it was because, well, number one, we feel comfortable and confident that we can do something, we can do this and that, you know, we will, you know, make enough money to sustain ourselves. But more importantly is, is, is the family and the kind of life that we, we want and that we want, our, you know, our daughter to have, I'm going to be there for her. And this kind of gives me that opportunity to do that. What are some things that you're looking to put in place or like guardrails that you can put up to make sure you can craft that time while still being able to like balance growing the business as well? I don't know that we have anything like 
super rigid right now. You know, R- Ryan and I are in constant communication. We have multiple weekly meetings that we know we're going to touch base on the major topics that we need to hit on, right? So whether it's sales and marketing or, or finances, we, we know what we need to accomplish and we set time aside for that. Um, it's very rare that like we're going to ad hoc all of a sudden have to jump into something that's not planned for. As far as like the week goes, like we're, we're trying to keep as, as, as strict to Monday to Friday as possible. We're trying not to work weekends if we don't have to. Yes, there are times where like we'll need to jump on and talk through some things. To say we have a standard nine to five is just not accurate. You know, we do our best to, to use the, the middle of the day for the bulk of our work and we're flexible with each other. And I'm a, I'm a morning person. Ryan is not a morning person. And I know that. And he knows that. So we work accordingly. So I'm usually up early because I've got a kid. And so I get a lot done in the morning. And... Ryan's the opposite. And so we kind of coordinate on that level and it actually helps accomplish from a communication standpoint, working with folks overseas, it helps. As you start thinking about growing the company and, you know, working with more people, in your opinion, like where do you see this hybrid remote work style going, dealing with overlap of hours between a certain time frame, but people yeah. working better in the mornings versus the afternoons? And, you know, I kind of love to hear your opinion on how you see building a company and growing a culture when you know, people aren't working in the same place or at the same times. It's a wild, wild time. I never would have thought that we would be doing this like 10 years ago. I mean, even back when I was working at Indeed and Datto, I hated working from home. I absolutely loathed it. I was never productive. We had, I was able to do it. I was allowed to do it. And I wouldn't ever refuse to do it unless I absolutely had to. And now I don't see another way. But I like to get out of the house. Like I think at some point we'll all probably join a co-working space for this, for our business, the hybrid styles is, is really the best way. I do think it's important, especially when you're managing and working with clients, right? Like you have to, you have to be there for them, right? So somebody needs to be available. You need some sort of support. Like my background's in customer success, right? And account management. So from that standpoint, I think over time, it's, it's, it's important to have the ability to support a team. That doesn't mean that every single person has to be in the same, same time zone or have the same working hours. I think it's what's more important is that there is there is a level of support for your your client base, regardless of who it is. And I think being flexible and having a team that can kind of work work through those those challenges is, is important. I mean, right now we're we're a small team. Um, we'd love to grow. That's that's the plan, right? We we want to scale, and so I I love team building. I love you know managing groups of uh, groups of people and. You know, I think ideally I'd love to have multiple folks uh, doing different functions in mixed time zones so that there is that like full coverage. You know, there's a lot of people out there who have quit or are looking to quit, you know, as going through this process, you know, very recently, you know, is there anything that you would have done different or is there, you know, like what's the best piece of advice you could give someone who's going through a similar process? I mean, when I made the decision, I was very firm that I was going to do it. You know, I think a lot of people say, oh, yeah, I want to quit. I want to do this. I want to do that. These are my dreams. But, you know, ever, no one ever does anything about it. I knew I was going to do it. And I, I kind of look at this. The sa- it's the same approach from when I quit smoking when we were in college. I remember reading. I was doing research on the best ways to quit smoking. And I was reading these forums. And this one guy said, the best thing you can do is tell all of your friends and family that you're going to quit the day that you're what day you're going to quit well in advance and make sure everybody knows that because then if you don't do it, you're a failure <laughs> and you're, and, and, you, and you didn't, you, you, you know, you, you let everyone down. And I was like, well, that's pretty messed up, but I did that. And it, it actually worked. Cause I'm like very competitive and this is really kind of how I work. I'm very competitive. I hate letting people down. And so that worked with smoking cigarettes and I quit and I cold Turkey and just picked the date, stopped, never did it again. It wasn't easy, but I did it. And I actually used that same approach. I didn't, I, I never wanted to come off as like, oh, I'm bragging and I'm telling, you know, all these people. And again, like, I'm not telling my coworkers at, at Datto, right? Or, or, you know, it's not like that, but all my closest family, friends, relatives, like I wanted them to know for multiple reasons, right? One, to create that external pressure, but also for like to start that networking and like people need to know what I'm doing so we can build a, build a business around it. And, you know, very quickly I had this like pressure externally that I created for myself. That's like the decision's made. You've already, you've already committed. Everyone, everyone knows you're, you're going to quit. You're going to start this job. It's going to be great. Like w- w- you can't give up now. And so that really helped me 
make sure that when that time came, like I have to have everything planned. Otherwise I would have disappointed myself, disappointed other folks. A man is only good as good as his word. And that's kind of how I, I live my life. I don't know if that's the best advice to give people, but that's kind of how that, that worked really well for me. That kind of ties into, you know, an age old debate on, you know, when's the right time to quit versus growing the side hustle to a point where yeah. it's big enough to grow. And I know like, there's only so many hours in a day. And a lot of times, you know, yeah. if you're working a full-time job, you can't devote enough time to grow it. But then on the flip side, you know, if you quit, you know, cold turkey and then yeah. don't have, you know, an income, it's that much harder when you get started. You know, do you have any thoughts on how to think about the right time to quit? Yeah, that's a tough one. I, I mean, there's a couple elements. I think on the personal side, like the most important thing, especially in these cra in crazy times right now, like you have to be financially stable. Um, I think we purposely waited until we felt that we were in a position to were comfortable enough to take a risk. And, you know, you got to play the worst case scenario game. That is critical. And you have to make sure that your family's on the same page. Like I wouldn't have done this if, if my wife wasn't supporting me. If Lindsay wasn't on board, like this is a decision we made together. This wasn't my decision. From like the, the business perspective, I mean, I, I worked on, on Propel like part-time for so long and that was, that was really tough and it became tough for me. And it also became tough for, you know, my, my colleagues for Ryan and Balin because I wasn't able to give them full-time because I had a full-time job and I had a family. And, you know, if I was able to give full, my full attention to that, you know, I, I would, it's a different story. You can only do so much part-time. I do think it's critical. Like you, you got to start before you quit. I guess I would caution like how long you can, you can go like half in half out, right? Like you can, you can only half ass so much. I'm not just saying I, I half ass anything, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think you have to, you have to dip your toes on both sides for a certain amount, but you do cross the threshold where just you, you burn yourself out and you're not really helping anybody. So you got to find that balance between dipping your toes on both sides and then taking that leap. I think there needs to be a foundation. If you don't have a solid foundation and like a, a, a strategic business plan before you quit and the, and like a framework built before you quit, you're shooting yourself in the foot. I, I would think it should take, you know, at least three to six months of like really heavy planning and building sales and building the network and building all, all the, the nitty gritty before at least three to six months. But it, it varies for everybody and depending on what the, what the job is. One thing to end it, I always ask everyone, you know, what you're most excited about over the next three to five years. And, you know, it can be tied specifically to Modern Launch. It can be tied to, you know, other ventures you're interested in as well. So, you know, what is what are you most excited about? Yeah, I'll say two things. One is tied to Modern Launch. So, you know, we're, we're, we build custom software, websites, mobile apps. We're working on some really cool stuff. And I, I love tech. That's why I'm still in tech. And I love the direction of, of the tech world right now. And, you know, we're, we're working on a really cool project right now in the NFT space, which is super interesting. I'm, I'm learning a lot and I can't wait to take on, on more projects that are in like uncharted territory and, and, and different technologies that I'm not super accustomed to because I'm learning a lot. And I frankly just find it very interesting. So like, I love having my hands in different areas. So this kind of job is really cool because every client is so different, right? Like, uh, you know, you could be working on an NFT project and then you could be building a custom software for a, a medical facility. It, 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 it's, it's so varying. It's, it's, it's pretty interesting. So I'm excited to work on, work with different people, work with different companies, different industries. I love that. I, I really need variety in my day to day. And I think that's the coolest part about like software development and building products is that when you're building for other folks, you get so much exposure and you get to see some really cool stuff. You get to build some really cool stuff to meet some really cool people. On the personal side, I'm just excited to spend more time with my, my family. I cannot wait. Lucy's at that age now. She's like almost nine months where her personality is like just really coming out. Once she's, she's, a, she's crawling up a storm, once she starts walking, my God, we're going to go on so many adventures. Um, and so, you know, with this line of work, like I have the ability to work anywhere. I can, my time is more flexible. So. I'm going to take that kid exploring the world. I can't wait. Thank you for listening. It really means a lot to us. We want to hear from you as we keep growing. Please reach out on whyquit.co if you have any feedback or potential guests. 
A special thanks to Chris Dole for the music. Please check out his newest album, Here's to You, on Spotify. Thank you, and we will be back next week with another episode.